Yeah, we've been, uh, I mean, look at these chives, man. These beautiful chive plants, they're so easy to grow. I was just thinking too, like, uh, might as well. Might as well uh, take the camera with me when I'm sitting here thinking. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, like how easy is it to grow chives, right? These things are like grass, right? It's like grass. And uh, you go to a store, you get this little flat, you know, clear plastic tray of, you know, a little handful of chives, and they ask, you know, three, four bucks. So I was like, why can't we just fill up a whole flat of chives here? Go out now and then, snip, snip, you know, bundle them up and uh, ask, I don't know, three bucks a bundle. Put them on the local uh, message board or email list and uh, make a little side cash, right? How hard is that? So we've been kind of leaning more and more towards uh, just growing herbs uh, as cash crops. You know, we got to feed ourselves with something, right? But uh, for the uh, for the income stream, income flow, which we have in been dire of in dire of need lately, uh, I think herbs are the way to go. Really, easiest things to grow. You know, yeah, they they don't uh, they don't uh, wilt in the sun. Uh, too easily, you know, they, they, they're pretty, uh, drought resistant. So I don't know, this year we're, uh, tossing around a lot of ideas and we're thinking, you know, we gotta get on some herbs. And not the kind, you know, that everybody thinks of. When you mention the herb mon, alright, the herb mon. Not that kind of herb. But I have been tempted to get, at least get into, like, some kind of hemp. Because that stuff is, there's so much money in that. <clears throat> but there's a lot of, you know, regulatory stuff if you want to try to sell organic and all that and I don't know if I'm into all that you know I'm into just selling uh, right now just on a local level just excess you know what we have in excess just to at least make back some of our time that we've put into this garden you know so we're not just out here <sighs> like most farmers you know just getting poorer and poorer each season <clears throat> as you can see though behind me uh, quite a bit of smoke in the air uh, from those fires in Canada, those wildfires in Canada. And my first my first question, my first impression, some of you that have been uh, tuned into the night watch, this is bugging me because it's crooked. You see that? Okay, that's better. <sighs> some things just get on my nerves. Uh, petty things. Got a nice little uh, solar light though. That's the way to go if you want to have a lit path. Don't worry about uh, stringing wires. Just get some solar lights. Uh, yeah, the first thing I thought of, right, I've done a show on this in the past. I have another show planned that I never quite finished on this uh, this uh, concept of uh, eco-terrorism, which is actually a thing, environmental terrorism. Uh, the FBI has a category. Uh, it's actually one of the main uh, threats, they say, to uh, the infrastructure. It's uh, eco-terrorism. And uh, so, the, so I look it up, you know, and it doesn't pop up right away, but if you type in... Um, say key keywords like arrested um fires canada wouldn't you know they just caught a guy uh he's getting charged on 10 different counts of arson in alberta same area where a lot of those wildfires are burning right now and uh in connection to fires one of them burned down a church and this guy was running around setting multiple fires so you know it's just this uh i don't know i guess that's the thing to do these days if you're a uh activist right just run around set the world ablaze and they'll blame it of course on uh, global warming right yeah uh, use it exploit it uh once again as any psychopath control freak does exploit it for their own ends right um yeah more global governments more taxation of the of the masses uh taxation of the poor is what it really is I, I love all these like uh i love all these ideas that are being tossed around right now about you know let's let's uh it's 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 for the earth right we got to pay for our bags now plastic bags um <clears throat> on so many levels we're being taxed to quote unquote save the earth right to uh, reduce carbon emissions uh you know we got we got to arrive at those un uh, agenda 2030 sustainable development goals or else right it's gonna be the, the end of the world basically 
yeah, we're, we need a world government or else, you know, the world is going to descend into a barbarism, right? Barbaric state um, of total chaos and anarchy. So the story goes, so the myth, the narrative goes. Um, I just think it's all too convenient that we have all these psychopaths running around lighting fires in this state in particular. I'm still waiting. The last I heard, the article that I saw was from March. I think it was 27th March. And they said uh, the Marshall Fire Investigation is still one to two months out. It's been about two months from the filming of this uh, little chit-chat here. And uh, they still have not released any information. The sheriff has not released any information as to the cause of the Marshall Fire here in Colorado. Some of you might may have seen some of the footage I've got of that of a just an insane apocalyptic, you know, fire spreading through neighborhoods, houses going up in flames, uh, one after the next. Eerie red glow, you know, over the main metropolis areas around Denver, Colorado, and. <clears throat> At one point uh, in, in 2022, I can't remember what the month was, but shortly after, it was uh, soon um, discovered that there were multiple, multiple, right? They don't say a couple, multiple points that that fire was set from. That was, uh, I think, what the sheriff's office uh, concluded. So, weird, huh? And, the, and this is not just, these are where it was set from. These are not just... Uh, what do they call it? When a, when a spark ignites another fire from the uh, original uh, source of the fire. Spot fires. It's been a while. It's been a while since my last rodeo, right? My last uh, wildfire rodeo in a, you know, short-term, long-term memory loss. I start to lose, uh, I start to forget some of this terminology. But yeah, it wasn't a spot fire. It was a, the actual uh, the actual ignition source had multiple sources, and right around the same time, like I mentioned uh, in several different rants, uh, several different shows, there were people being caught for lighting fires. One crazy ass looking lady setting fires in Boulder, Boulder campus, I think is what it was, Boulder County. Arsonist, one down in Colorado Springs, another guy. Setting fires. One of them was like running through the uh, forest, I believe, yelling, burn it all down or something like that. So these, you know, whatever's inspiring, uh, inspiring these uh, psychos to run around trying to burn down everything. Uh, I think that's the real story. Other than, uh, you know, what the uh, lamestream corporate media tries to push. Enemy of the people fake news media has tried to push the narrative constantly that this is a result of all these crazy weather events no matter what it may be right whether it's flooding uh, you know whether it's raining too much too little uh, drought uh, I think everything uh, tornadoes right uh, hurricanes forest fires right wildfires I think everything other than volcanoes I think they've been able to pinpoint as man-made uh, the result of man-made climate change, right? <clears throat> well, it's not too hard to pinpoint, you know, when it's a man-made uh, weather event, if it's uh, a couple of psychopaths running around, mentally uh, unhinged individuals, hell-bent on burning the world down, you know? Burning it all down. Just to sit back and watch the world burn. It's not too hard to trace. I mean, that's obviously a man-made cause, right? Man-made wildfires. Not climate change. Literally set by a couple mentally ill individuals running around and trying to burn everything down. For whatever purpose. Now, is this copycat? That's one of my theories. Is, is this a copycat... Um, phenomenon right like we see with a uh, mass school shootings or any mass shooting in general the more attention the media lavishes on a topic the more likely you're going to get a few uh, you know mentally unstable people wanting to be part of that narrative i guess right 
you know, they're overlooked in life. Uh, they feel like underappreciated, undervalued. Nobody cares, you know, they're depressed. They really don't care to live, right? And they don't care if they kill anybody else in the process. Maybe they're not even thinking that far ahead, right? But they want to get attention regardless. How else are you going to get attention in this world? Uh, this mass media driven world other than being a part of the popular myth you know you too can be a movie star in this grand reality show that the media puts out for us all to consume on a daily basis you too can play a part And a lot of people are just, I think, inspired by, in my opinion, the uh, fallen one who just is hell-bent on destruction. You know? Destroying as many lives as he can in the process. That's their, their true inspiration, you know, on a spiritual level. That's what... It, that's where my mind goes, anyway. Anyway, some things to think about. Um, gotta get back to work. Yeah, we're uh, hazy skies today. And this grass. Look at this stuff. You know? Look at all that uh, amazing spring rain and the grass. I swear it shot up about a foot in one week. It's, it's so bountiful, right? If we just had more, like, livestock roaming around to chop it all up, I wouldn't have to do so much mowing. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get back to work. Just some thoughts. Yeah, let me know what you think.